Hello and welcome to this MRC PCH revision video. In this video we'll discuss the proper interpretation of diagnostic tests. So why is this important? Well, first and foremost you need to be able to properly interpret the meaning of test results in order to properly treat and counsel your patients. Secondly, as you can see here, there have been a number of recent media stories about doctors' abilities in this regard. Consequently, you'll find this knowledge tested frequently in professional exams. In our case, such questions are likely to be seen in the theory and science and applied knowledge and practice papers. To begin with, we'll need to revise some terms. We'll start with sensitivity. Sensitivity is a proportion of people who are affected by an illness that also test positive for that illness. In this 2x2 two two table, the people who are affected and test positive is represented by box A. Boxes A and C represent the total number of people affected by illness. So to work out sensitivity, you divide A by A plus C. You can remember this by working from top to bottom down the left column. Next, there is specificity. Specificity is a proportion of people unaffected by disease that test negative for that disease. Box D represents those unaffected who test negative. Boxes B and D represented all the people unaffected by disease. So specificity can be worked out by dividing D by B plus D. In other words, working bottom to top up the right hand column. Positive predictive value is the proportion of people who test positive that actually have the disease. Again, box A represents those who both test positive and have the disease. Boxes A and B represent the total number of people that test positive. So positive predictive value is worked out by dividing A by A plus B, working left to right along the top row. Finally, there is negative predictive value, which is the proportion of people who test negative that are also unaffected by disease. Again, the people who test negative and are unaffected is represented by box D. Boxes C and D represent all the people who test negative. So negative predictive value is D divided by C plus D, working right to left along the bottom row. To avoid confusion, take some time to make sure you're completely clear on these concepts before moving on. Let's imagine you've just assessed a two-year-old with a fever. Their symptoms aren't very specific and neither are your findings from physical examination. You think it's probably just a viral illness, but you're worried about missing a urinary tract infection. You decide to do a dipstick test on the child's urine. While you're waiting for the sample, you do a quick search and find out that the urine nitrite test has a sensitivity of 50% and a specificity of 98%. So what does this really mean? Seeing as your differential diagnosis is between a virus and a UTI, we'll set the pretest probability of UTI at 50%. This means that out of every 100 people, 50 will have a UTI, here in red, and 50 won't, here in blue. We know that sensitivity is A divided by A plus C. We know that sensitivity is 50% and that A plus C is 50. So A is 0.5 times 50, which is 25. That leaves 25 to populate box C. Moving on, we know that specificity is D divided by B plus D. Again, we know that specificity is 98% and that B plus D is 50. So D is 0.98 times 50, which is 49. And that leaves one behind to populate box B. We now have enough information to work out the positive predictive value. Remembering the earlier slide, we know that positive predictive value is A divided by A plus B. Here, that is 25 divided by 26, which is 0.96 or 96%. Since positive predictive value is a proportion of people that test positive who actually have the illness, this gives us our post-test probability of UTI. 
In this case, a positive urine nitrite would be really helpful information. But what if the test is negative? We can work out the negative predictive value, which you remember is D divided by C plus D. In this case, that's 49 divided by 25 plus 49, which works out at 0.66. But that's the proportion of people who test negative that don't have the illness, which isn't what we're interested in. We're interested in the proportion of people who test negative that actually do have the illness, the false negative rate. That is worked out by subtracting the negative predictive value from 1. So 1 minus 0.66 is 0.34 or 34%. So the post-test probability of UTI if the nitrite test is negative is 34%, which is not quite as helpful in ruling out UTI as a positive result was in ruling it in. If you find the maths confusing, just think SPIN, which stands for a specific test, if positive, rules in the disease. Let's wind the clock back in our scenario to the beginning and start over. The pretest probability of UTI is still 50%, but this time you find sensitivity and specificity data on urine nitrites combined with leukocyte esterase. This time the sensitivity is 98% and the specificity is 70%. Again, we have our 50 affected and 50 unaffected people. From the sensitivity, we can work out that A is 49, leaving 1 to populate box C. From the specificity, we can work out that D is 35, leaving behind 15 to populate box B. Using those figures, we can work out our positive predictive value, which this time works out to 77%. Moving on, we can work out our negative predictive value, which is 97%. And using this, we can work out our false negative rate, which is 3%. So this time, a negative test result is very useful in ruling out a UTI. This scenario is described in the SNAP mnemonic, which stands for a sensitive test, if negative, rules out the disease. I'll end with this slide because understanding the true meaning of diagnostic test results hinges on understanding these ideas. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for listening.